In this video, we're going to introduce the basics of using the Analog Discovery's arbitrary waveform generator, often called the AWG, or just the waveform generator, to apply voltage to a circuit. Voltages and currents in a circuit are categorized as being either constant or time varying. In the voltage instrument quick start video, we showed how to use the voltage instrument to apply a constant fixed voltage to a circuit. As we saw, the voltage instrument can only apply positive or negative 5 volts to our circuits. The arbitrary waveform generator, however, can be used to apply a wide range of time varying or constant voltages to our circuits. It may appear during this tutorial that the AWG on the analog discovery makes the voltage instrument useless, since it can apparently do everything that the voltage instrument does and more. However, even though the voltage instrument has a limited number of options, it's still an extremely useful tool. For example, many circuits, especially those which use transistors, require one or more constant voltage supplies. It's typical to use the voltage instrument for these supplies, leaving the AWG available to apply input voltages to the circuit. This is our representation of the connectors on your analog discovery. The analog discovery waveform generator has the capability of applying two different voltages, channel 1 and channel 2. The channel 1 connector is labeled as W1, the channel 2 connector is labeled as W2. Each waveform generator channel has only one terminal, like the voltage instrument. The voltages applied by the waveform generator are all relative to ground, which are still the terminals denoted with the downward arrows. The W1 terminal is connected to a yellow wire, while the W2 terminal is connected to a yellow wire with a white stripe. The ground terminals, of course, are still the black wires. The voltage applied by the waveform generator is controlled by the WaveGen instrument in the waveform software. Let's open that instrument up now and see how it works. Clicking on the WaveGen icon opens the waveform generator window. This window is fairly complex since the Analog Discovery's waveform generator provides a very wide range of capabilities. In this video, we'll only introduce some of the basic and most common functions provided by the WaveGen instrument. By default, only channel 1 of the AWG opens the first time you open the WaveGen instrument. If you wish to select an additional channel, simply click on the Select Channels button and choose the channel you want to select or deselect. The waveform generator's capabilities can be divided into either playing a signal or creating a signal. Creating a signal consists simply of specifying how the voltage changes as a function of time. Playing the signal controls the way in which the specified voltage signal is provided to the waveform generator terminals. Playing the signal is controlled by these three tabs, Basic, Sweep, and Advanced. The Basic tab simply plays back the signal as it is specified without modification. The Sweep tab allows you to play the specified signal while varying the signal's frequency and or amplitude according to a predefined pattern. The Advanced tab allows you to vary the frequency and or amplitude of the signal being played according to some user-specified pattern. In technical jargon, the Advanced tab performs, performs frequency and amplitude modulation. In this video, we'll restrict our attention to the basic signal playback so that we'll only talk about the signal creation options as seen under the Basic Playback tab. Similar options for signal creation are available under the Sweep and Advanced tabs, though the interface will appear different. There are three methods of creating signals using the AWG, Standard, Custom, and Player. We'll talk about these methods individually, beginning with the options available under the Standard tab. Under the Standard tab, a series of icons allow you to select from a set of commonly used predefined signals. For example, Constant, Sinusoidal, square, and triangular waveforms can be created by clicking on the appropriate icon. When a wave shape is selected, the waveform will be displayed in the plot window on the right of the waveform generator window. Notice that the plot window provides both horizontal, or time, and vertical, or voltage, axis labels. Once a basic wave shape is selected, you can adjust the frequency, amplitude, and offset of the signal. Loosely speaking, the frequency column allows you to change how quickly the signal changes with time, the amplitude column allows you to change the peak values of the signal, and the offset column allows you to change the average value of the signal. The values in any of these columns can be changed in three ways. You can type a value directly in the text box and press the Enter key on your keyboard. 
You can use the slider bar to increase or decrease the value. Or you can select a value from the drop-down menu. Please notice that there are min and max values displayed at the top and bottom of each column. These specify the minimum and maximum values you're allowed to select. If you want to choose a value outside the range displayed, you can just change the range. For example, if I want to set the frequency to 500 kilohertz, I must first set the maximum value to something over 500 kilohertz. For example, if I choose 1 megahertz as the maximum value, it's now possible to choose 500 kilohertz as a signal frequency. Next, we'll talk about the custom tab. The custom tab allows you to create signals according to your own specifications. Under the custom tab, you can create signals according to your own specifications. The primary options under the custom tab allow you to create signals using the edit option, import a waveform from a file using the file option, delete a waveform from the list of currently available waveforms using the remove option, or save a waveform to a file using the export option. Clicking on the edit button opens an editor window. There are five basic options for creating or editing waveforms in this window. The function tab, for example, allows you to create a waveform from piecewise functions. For example, we can specify that the waveform is a sinusoid starting at 10% of the total time and having a duration of 30% of the total time. We can then specify that the waveform include a triangular wave starting at 70% of the total time and having a duration of 20% of the total time. You can also create your waveform by drawing it directly on the preview window or specifying individual values. There are, of course, a number of other ways to create your waveform. To save the function for later playback, simply click on the Save as New button. If you use the Save button, it may overwrite an existing waveform with the new file. A representation of the waveform shape will show up in the list of available waveforms on the Arbitrary Waveform Generator window. As with the standard waveforms, the frequency, amplitude, and offset of this waveform can be set in the Waveform Generator window. To load a previously saved waveform, click on the File button. A new window will open, allowing you to import the desired file. Click on the Browse button and navigate to the desired file. Click on Open to load the file in the waveform generator. An icon representing the new waveform will appear as one of the waveforms which can be selected. If you want, you can edit any of the waveforms in this list by selecting the waveform and clicking on Edit. For example, we'll modify our imported file by sketching a new waveform over part of the existing waveform. The editor does allow you to draw waveforms directly by clicking and dragging with your mouse. The Remove button allows you to remove waveforms from the list of available waveforms. Simply select the waveform you want to delete and click Remove. Finally, a waveform you created can be saved as a file by selecting the file to be saved and clicking on Export. A dialog box will open, allowing you to navigate to the location where the waveform is to be saved. Provide a file name and click Save on this dialog box. Finally, we'll talk about the Player tab. This tool allows you to readily import and play a signal from a file. Specifically, WAV file formats are supported so that you can use your analog discovery to play audio files. In order to load a file using the Player tab, simply click on Add, navigate to the location where the file is located, select the file, and click on Open. The file name will appear on the list of available waveforms. If the file is a WAV file, additional information will be displayed about the selected file the file size in kilosamples per second, and the sampling rate in kilohertz. The sampling rate is especially important if you want to play back the signal at the same rate at which it was recorded. Simply type the sampling rate in the frequency text box and press enter. If the file is played through a speaker, it will be played at the same rate at which it was recorded, and the file will sound right. You can, of course, play the signal at a lower or higher frequency, but the sound will be distorted. 
Once we've set up the waveform, we have to turn the waveform generator on in order to actually apply the appropriate voltage to the terminals. Each channel of the waveform generator has two buttons which control the power applied by the AWG. There's an Enable Disable button and a Run Stop AWG button. The Enable Disable button, just to the left of the Run AWG button, is used to shut off all power to the AWG. In order to avoid getting shocked, you should make sure that this button always reads Disabled when you're working with your circuit. When you're ready to apply power to your circuit, click on Run AWG. This will automatically enable the AWG as well. If you want to turn off all power to the circuit, click on the Enable button so that it reads Disable. The reason for this approach is because signals are generally considered to consist of both constant and time varying components. The Enable Disable and Run Stop buttons treat these components slightly differently. If the waveform generator is off, clicking on the Run AWG button turns on both components of the signal. If the waveform generator is on, clicking Stop AWG turns off only the time varying component of the signal. Any constant or DC voltage levels will remain. Clicking Disable, however, turns off both components of the signal so that no power is applied to the circuit. Therefore, if the signal you're applying to your circuit using the AWG consists only of a constant voltage, clicking Stop AWG has no effect on the power being applied to the circuit. Now let's wire up a simple circuit and use some of the waveform generator's capabilities. For this demo, we'll only show use of the standard waveforms available under the Basic tab. These will probably be the most common waveforms you'll use and therefore deserve the most attention. We're going to use the circuit we created in the voltage instrument video to demonstrate basic use of the waveform generator. The circuit schematic is shown here. We simply replace the fixed 5 volt supply with a voltage supply by channel 1 of the waveform generator. Now the LED will light up only during the time periods when the applied voltage is high enough to provide the required 2 volt voltage across the LED. Here's the circuit we wired up for our video on the voltage instrument. The only change we need to make to the circuit is to replace the V plus source, the red wire, with channel 1 of the AWG, the yellow wire. Now we can apply a time varying signal and see the response by the behavior of the LED. Let's apply a sine wave to the LED. To create our signal, select the standard tab and click on the icon that looks like a sine wave. Set the frequency to, say, 500 millihertz and the amplitude to 4 volts. We'll leave the offset at 0 volts so that the signal alternates between positive 4 volts and negative 4 volts. The LED, of course, will only turn on when the wave is at a high voltage, so we should see the LED turn on at a rate of about once every 2 seconds. To apply power to the circuit, simply click on the Run AWG1 button. We can easily change the rate at which the LED flickers by changing the frequency of the applied sine wave. 